The 29th of September 2024, accountability. There's no doubt we have a wish list for our political aspirations. And also we have to accept that even if we were running Ireland or anywhere else, there'd be mistakes made. There'd be errors. But there wouldn't be the level of corruption that there is at the moment. Now, in ordinary life, if you're a very, very rich person, you were in a, you're in effect insulated from the law of the land because you don't need to drive. If you're going to have a few drinks, you can get a chauffeur or you can have your own private driver to drive you. And unless you kill somebody, but it has been known for very famous people and very rich people to be convicted of crimes. I can think of a few, particularly in the United States, and to have served prison or be threatened with prison. So it's not just all about money, but the thing is about political accountability is that the best way to get out of accountability, the best way to escape doing things right and live it honestly, is certainly to enter politics. It isn't the saying, politics is the last refuge of a scoundrel. And there's no doubt that is the case. There's no need for me to mention names here in Ireland. Everyone knows that there's any bit of age to them about it. The younger people may not. And we, I like to learn from it. And there's no doubt, unless it's stopped, it will go on to, for 100 years and maybe 200 years. And even if we were to correct it now and fix it, it'll come back if we don't mind it. It's like having a piece of land. If you don't look after it and keep the weeds down and all of that stuff, uh, it'll go a bit wild. It has to be watched. And the politicians have to be watched. And it's for that reason I made the point about an anti-corruption uh, body in Ireland who, that would be privately funded by someone like the late Chuck Feeney or whatever and uh, that could pursue these people and also could pay for access to information requests and all of that stuff. So, yes, I think that a body like that would be good and I think that uh, the government's back when Chuck, when Chuck Feeney was proposing it, I mentioned this before, they were in horror of it. They didn't want a second tier police force doing their job. And that's what we should actually have. Uh, 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 another body chasing down corruption everywhere it is. And even though they weren't able to get convictions, even though the last resort would be to report it to the Gardaí or to take civil actions for redress of civil debt or whatever, by having it publicly known and putting it up to these groups to sue, let them sue, and have a fund there that you'd sue them, that they'd have to prove their case. They wouldn't do it at all. Now we see one of the ways corruption works, one of my old bugbears is this, that the law of the European Union, which came in and replaced Irish law in some respects, that doesn't mean if we weren't in the EU, we wouldn't have these laws. They'd have been brought in on the environment through the Aarhus Convention and various things like that. Anyway, they'd be there. Countries that have nothing to do with Europe, like Iceland, are, are, have these laws, and Switzerland. So, so, so hunting political and official crooks should be seen as a sort of hobby, like fishing or hunting duck or pigeon or whatever it is. It should be seen as a hobby and there should be a certain amount of pleasure gained from catching them. Now, as I said about the environmental law, the law is quite clear. None of the stuff that's been built in Ireland should be built without a full engineering environmental assessment and an environmental report with public participation. The public are entitled to be informed. When all options are open. That's what the law says. Yet they're denied this. So that's a form of corruption. Now one of the main architects of this. Was Eamon Cabbagehead Ryan. Of the, he, he's still. Well he was the leader of the Green Party. He's now going to run away. 
clear off. No more contesting elections or anything else. So he managed for about eight years to hold public office, high office in Ireland, and break the law, deliberately break the law. And now he's going to toddle off into the sunset and draw his pension. And he's not the only one. What I would like to see is that we could squeeze his pension. That there'd be a full report put and he'd be entitled to read it and he could get his best barristers to comment on a honey with the like. And then you cut down his pension. You cut down his money coming in. Another lad I'd be after is Enda Kenny, the lead, former leader of Fine Gael, who said he'd never put one more red cent into the banks. He's sitting back, wherever he is, over a mayo, drawing his pension. If I had me way, he'd get 100 euros a week, maybe 120 to keep him going. That's the only way we're ever going to get around this, and we can only float it out there. Make them be accountable. Form the law in such a way that they can't wriggle out of that. That they have to suffer the consequences. At least if you didn't succeed 100%, my, my plan would, uh, would trip them up. They wouldn't know where to turn. And so in the next all, there'll be crooks in there as well. There could be a coalition of Fine Gael, Sinn Féin and Fianna Fáil, and there will be several crooks, and some of them will hold public office. Some of them will be ministers and junior ministers. And they'll play their fiddle till the cows come home. And they'll go off then with their pension and their all, whether they're right or wrong, and enjoy it. That's not right. We should be looking at how we, 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 we nail them on this. We see in RTE all of the rascals that done the harm going off on massive pensions. They're still going to be getting probably something of a, a, an annuity every every year. Although some of those people are on a contract. So when they get 350000 of a payoff, that's all they get. But that would have to be looked at. Moreover, every penny of it would be published and in the public domain. It's a big issue, accountability. It's a threat to them. And I don't mean just pricking them up over some small thing. We all know with this crack in the door with the security hut and the bicycle shed, we all know what happened there. Everyone got a slice of the cake and the thing became too so big. There were so many slices of cake and big slices that it became ridiculous. We know nobody will be held accountable. So how you frame the law and what you do to make the bring the law on them instead of bringing it on the likes of me for what they call hate speech. Well, that's the question. Comment underneath. We'll see you back soon. Bye.